Welcome to the fourth episode of Founders Only. My name is Ronster Baityong. If you don't know me, it's gonna be there again. Production team, put it here. Okay. My name is Ronster Baityong. I'm the founder and CEO of Podcast Network Asia and also the founder of Hustle Share. And now this is our, if you're new to the show, this is our sequel to the Hustle Share podcast, which I've been doing for over four years. Uh, it's called Founders Only, where we do a deep dive on the lives of the best startup founders, not just in the Philippines, but in Southeast Asia. And today is going to be very exciting because I've been wanting to get this guy on the show for a while now. His name is Patrick Gentry of Sprout. So Sprout is easily one of the biggest, if not even the biggest, HRIS or HR company, uh, HR platform in the Philippines. And today we will be talking about What's it been like since the last time they've been on the show on Hustle Share around 2020, right before the pandemic, and how they were able to survive the pandemic and also scale up to just recently uh, they raised Series B in their startup. But the most important thing, and this is the one thing that I really wanted to zero in when he came through, have you ever heard of the rule of 3 and 10? Because I learned it during um, their very first episode here. And the rule of 3 and 10 technically is about how your systems and your teams break in multiples of 3 and 10. And you will learn about this because we talked about it in depth. In the second part, we also talked about what's the transition like becoming being a founder to a real CEO and what are the repercussions and all that. But stick around till the end because he had a very interesting Founders only top five that you should know to recognize who the other best startup founders are in this ecosystem. But before we start this episode, please like, comment, and subscribe because we're on YouTube. And so you can also understand if you like this content. But let's start this episode right now. Founders only is brought to you by Paymongo, the payment gateway for business growth. Paymongo allows your business to accept online payments from customers through Visa, MasterCard, Gcash, GrabPay, Maya, online banking, buy now, pay later, and many more. All with just one online platform. Sign up for free at paymongo.com. Also brought to you by Capita. Capita Software Solutions seeks to automate the equity management process for startups, including workflows around cap tables, ESOPs, due diligence, and transactions. Sign up at capita.com to get started with your digital cap table, ESOP, award granting, and all things equity free for companies with under 25 stakeholders. And brought to you by GoTime Bank. GoTime Bank is owned by the Gokong Wei Group, the same companies that brought you brands you love, like Cebu Pacific, Robinsons, True Value, Toys R Us, South Star Drug, and many more. GoTime Bank makes next-level banking a breeze with its convenient account opening process. It takes less than five minutes to get started via the app. Plus, get your GoTime Bank Visa card at one of their kiosks for free. Download the GoTime Bank app today and experience the next level of banking. You may visit www.gotimebank.com.ph for more details. And CCAP. CCAP is a lending platform powered by UBX Philippines. With CCAP, you can easily apply for a loan from 5,000 pesos up to 1 million pesos from the comfort of your home nationwide. Visit www.ccap.ph, sign up and apply for a loan now. That's www.seekcap.ph. Take your business to new heights by seeking capital with Seekcap. Welcome to the fourth episode of Founders Only. I have been wanting to get this guy back. I hope Alex was here also because when I had them, I thought that I got the Holy Grail. All right, the Holy Grail meaning. The rule of three and ten. When I started thinking, uh, they started talking about this in their very first uh, episode when they guessed it on Hustle Share around early 2020, late 2019. I thought, like, all right, when we scale Podcast Network Asia, I know what to do because these guys taught me about the rule of three and ten. And holy shit, I am so wrong. <laughs> I think we're, it just means we're bad teachers. <laughs> no, no, it's just so hard. And today our main topic will always revolve around scaling your startup from 1 to 10 and from 10 to 100. But at the end of the day also, we will be talking about the journey from being founder to becoming a CEO. Because those are two mm-hmm. different jobs. But before yeah. I get carried away, let's welcome back to the podcast, Mr. Patrick Gentry. Of Sprout. Woo-hoo! 
<laughs> Welcome back, man. Oh my God. How are you? Uh, that's always a loaded question. This is my very first founders <laughs> only after my co-founder passed away. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Because we were supposed to do it on the same Tuesday two weekends ago. That's but right. I forgot that. Yeah, it's 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 rough. It's it, it, when people. It's before I just didn't realize how easy it is to answer. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, that's right. It's like automatic. Yeah, yeah. but now it's like, how am I? Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm okay, but man, it's rough. Yeah. It's rough. It's been really rough. Yeah. Can't imagine. But yeah, it, it's really hard. Um, I was just actually in a call with Roland and Rexy mm. earlier today. Mm-mm. It's just I, I can't even fathom that I'm having to go through this. Because who do you go to yeah. for this thing in the ecosystem that's lost a co-founder? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. So I'm 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 in it alone, but uh we'll figure it out. My co-founder is here, just not in physical. Form. That's right. There you that's go. That's right. So bro. That without getting uh, get car- getting carried away, the last time you were here, I remember it vividly because I was so proud that I got Sprout in the podcast. You <laughs> literally were just one of the very first startups that had raised Series A, and mm-hmm. that was a big ass milestone already. Mm-hmm. It's true. And now you just recently raised Series B. Yeah. What? Well, give me the 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 skinny of what happened after again early twenty twenty. Mm. There was no pandemic. And now we're talking about this as we're recording in 2023 during the mid mid uh, mid part of 2023. What happened? Oh, man. I have a good story for you. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> oh, man. This is like, uh, this is really going into it, okay? Mm. So, leading up to 20, leading up to the end of 2019, right. we we're raising Series A, right? We were running out of money. Yep. We were like delaying payments. Oh, my God. We were delaying rental payment. Uh, yep. Everywhere. We can- everything. Mm-hmm. Everything that we could, we yep. were super pushing back. Mm-hmm. So we had a, a big, like, build up of right. expenses. Yep. Right. And we were, I mean, it was like pretty intense uh-huh. getting up to that Series A. Um, Alex was like, oh my gosh, are we going to make payroll? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, no, it's oh, okay. Man. It's okay. It's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the optimist. Um, very intense times. Uh, yep. We raised Series A. Okay. Um, went through. Half of it pretty quickly. Yeah. How quick? Uh, three months. And you guys raised how much again? Six million. Six million USD. Three mil- yeah. So three million gone three because million you have accumulated so we much. We accumulated all this debt and we were oh building out God. a new office and like blitz scaling, like oh full God. on, like boom, right. hammering, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Pretty intense. Mm-hmm. And then pandemic hit. Shit. Uh, March and everything shut down. Like our sales pipeline died, dissolved, out, like just gone. Um, Half of, more than half the accounts that had signed up for us and were in the implant uh, stage uh, evaporated. They were just like, yeah, churn. Because they're like, oh, you know, we're not yet fully on the system. We're just going to pause this because we don't want to like go through implementation right now and all this stuff. It's a new system. So everything. Uh, So that was like very interesting times. How did that feel? Uh, Painful. (laughs) <laughs> Cause it was like we had like, so okay early 2020 maybe like March 2020, okay right when pandemic hit we were we probably had 12 months runway, okay um and then no sales coming in so the runway is gonna get shorter if we didn't do something right, really right, quickly right right so uh, my co-founder and I we went on 50 percent salary um and, and you did this prior I remember right like, away like March like mm-hmm. yeah mid March. Yeah. Wow. Um, no, I remember in, during your episode mm, where you also did this um, before uh, before Series uh, A. Early days, yeah. Right. Yeah. Or before, or, or maybe leading up to Series A, right? We yeah. Were, uh, we were super trying to save. Uh, yeah, so we had, we had, so we ran, went on 50% salary. We, we put the company on a four-day work week to save jobs. Okay. Um, because we needed to reduce payroll. Okay. Uh but we didn't want to let people go. So we, everybody, like we kind of did this like consensus thing where we said, hey guys, we have options. Take a pay cut for, for. Yeah, for we can, everybody, okay. all of us can take a pay cut, work less days. Yeah. Um, nothing's really happening anyway in the market. We launched this big rescue kit, which was like free HR and payroll for two months for businesses mm-hmm. just to help them get through the early pandemic. Okay. We had a ton of signups and interest and stuff, but didn't really convert to paying clients. So there was really nothing happening. 
And so we, yeah, we, we went to the four day work week at 80% pay, just like walked away from the office, um, cut all of our expenses, like dropped out of every org that we were part of and all yep. the org, all that's everything. Like I was like looking at every single line item on the expense sheet, like, a an expense for 5,000 pesos was scrutinized very heavily. Yep. You know? Yep. <laughs> I mean, just to that level. Right. And then. And then that wasn't enough. So we had to let go of 20% of staff. Um, uh, and I was like, if, if I would say the most painful experience so far in Sprout was that. So, so Alex and I, and I think two other people from XCOM split up all the people that we were letting go. And then we talked to them during oh, like way. this one day. It was like meeting after meeting after meeting of saying, you know, I'm sorry, you know, we're just mm -hmm. at that point. Da, da, da. Um, did this email to everybody in the company about what was happening and why and all this stuff. So yeah, that was very painful. Yeah, um, that was 2020. Okay. So post Series A, that, that was my experience. Oh, and then we got destroyed on the board. <laughs> what do you mean destroyed on the board? I mean the the board was like you know all oh, your we, board. Our my our board of directors was like, okay. hey, you know we need to grow. <laughs> Shit. We need to like, you know, get out of this uh, or figure out what to do with the company. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of pressure. We kind of had it at one point, a um, certain timeline to like get things in order. So, mm -hmm. you know, just like, and that kind of pressure is good yeah. in a way because it really like, you know, it's a good reminder of the realities, right? Of your situation. Like you have to get things in order. Exactly. Figure out your way out. Exactly. Um, and so we we kind of did like 2021. Um, we got everybody back. It was January 2021. We got everybody back on um, five days a week and full 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 pay except for except for Alex and I, of course. <laughs> um, but I think Woo. we got there maybe two thirds halfway through the year or something. But the the business was cash flow positive January 2021 onwards, oh my and God. then we got profitable in Q3 of 2021 and and really like turned things around. Got, that got is sustainable amazing. and. Got our growth rate back up. So it was like, uh, it was good. Yeah, that's Took great. a lot of discipline. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, again, a couple of things that I want to unpack here. For startup founders that are going through this, mm -hmm. you technically sign up for that pressure mm -hmm. when you take on funding. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's an angel, mm -hmm. a VC, a P, whatever. That's right. But the, the moment you accept funding from someone, you give them a really reasonable voice mm -hmm. to give you whether they're on your board or just a shareholder. Yeah. And you cannot say, I am not going to listen. I'm not going to do yeah. it. That's the responsibility that you take yeah. by taking on funding. Yeah, exactly. Fiduciary right. responsibility. Exactly. I mean, these people gave you millions of dollars. You know, right? I, exactly. I feel incredibly, uh, I guess, uh, respond or beholden or responsible to like mm -hmm. make them return, you know? That's why they invested in exactly. the So I'm like, yeah, I feel that pressure. Right. It's, and it's good. In the hierarchy of needs, at the end of the day, you got to protect the board, mm -hmm. right? I mean, at the end of the day, you got to protect your team. Mm -mm. And us founders care more about the team more than yeah, anything at the end sure. of the day. We don't want to let anyone go. Yeah. But again, at the board level, that's who you need to protect. And yeah. you work as a founder. And this is what we're going to be talking about later. Mm. What it is? What does it take to become a founder to become a real CEO who leads the board, or actually, no, that's a chairman. Mm -hmm. um, the CEO works for the board, right? And that's what we'll talk about yeah. later. But okay, I, I want to un unpack one thing, mm -hmm. um, Patrick. Mm -hmm. So you don't get to cash flow positive mm -hmm. and you don't get to profitability if you didn't do the right bets. Mm -hmm. So you already have this pressure from the board, mm -hmm. which again, <laughs> That, you need you need brass balls to take because yeah, you you don't have brass balls you're gonna wilt under that pressure yeah, yeah for and sure. sometimes the easy route is just to give up yeah that's right right yeah I've but seen it. this is where legit founders that are going into this new podcast that I have <laughs> yeah. have earned their stripes because we've gone through that pain threshold mm -mm. what were the moves that you did right despite all of these things seemingly not going your way. Mm -mm. Well, I think I was, I don't know. I, I guess I go to the financial side because that, it, was a, it was a financial equation. It, it was is, like, it is. I think it's, it's, and it's super easy to, it's super easy to kind of get caught up in, in 
I don't know, things that aren't real, but like really digging in with the finances and understanding like this is where we're at. This is how much we're burning. This is what we're spending money on. You know, going line by line through the budget and and critiquing everything like on a on a weekly basis, really. I mean, yep. we were it it just was like a huge amount of diligence. Right. Um and we and we were very critical of our mid-level and senior and executives, mid-level up mm. in terms of managers in in Sprout. So like the higher salary you had in Sprout, the more critical we were. Absolutely. Of like, you got to hey, earn your keep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In that situation, if you're being, if you're getting paid more, if you're an executive or a VP or whatever, yeah, we're, we look super critically. So yeah, I think when we did the, when we did let people go, it was much more from that level, that mid and up, than than rank and file. Because the higher ticket sizes, so for example, a salary of say a VP can probably pay for three to five people. Yeah, easy for sure. Right? For sure. And you know, you gotta live with who you got. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's not fun. Because yeah. at the end of the day, there's two sides to this equation. I went through this earlier this year too. Mm -hmm. And me and my co-founder literally looked people in the eye. We we had to take some really hard decisions. Mm -hmm. I, it's it's eerily similar to what you did. Yeah. We lined everybody up. Yeah. Talk to those people one by one. Mm -hmm. Tell them if they're in or unfortunately they were gonna have to let them go. Mm -hmm. It's gut wrenching, but this is this is my third time doing this. Oof. My first one was um, in Party File, my first startup. Yeah. When I did that, it was game over. So yeah. It was a double win. Oof. Yeah, that's hard. The second one was again uh, also in Chatbot PH, but this was it wasn't my call. Mm -hmm. It was the acquirer's call because they got acquired, right? Oh yeah. But I had to, I had to be the one to sorry. Game yeah. over. Pandemic yeah. hit us. Yeah. But this was the last the this last one we did to save us. Yeah. And I'm I'm ha this bittersweet because mm -mm. it was the right thing to do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It was hard because the hard part is shit. You're gonna have to let people go. Yeah, you have you care about these people. Yeah. You wanna try to help them get their next gig. Yeah. Some of them you were able to do. Some of them I just weren't able to find that one. Yeah, and I carry that cross with me. Mm -mm. But the hard part, bro, is who's left. Yeah, because yeah. man, everybody's gonna hate you. Yeah, people are hard. gonna doubt. Yeah. How did you trudge on? Because you did you you don't Everybody, get to, yeah. you're not gonna get to cr break even mm -hmm. and profitability if you didn't do the right moves. And I'll share also what we did in PA to get that done. Yeah. Well, how do you do it? Um so biggest thing with that, like you you mentioned, you know, uh, one of the things that kind of that you kind of mentioned was making the call, right? Yeah. We have to let people go. Mm. It's like there's if there's so many. I guess the biggest mistake that I that I see in in these situations, or maybe what I would say that we did right in mm -hmm. this situation was that we made decisions. Yes, you know, and the timing it's of like, it too. It sounds stupid, but right. like you have to make the decision. Mm -hmm. Like with the timing, like you say, when are we gonna do this? Oh, shucks, you know, our runway's getting smaller. You know, we need to make the call. We need to get to this level of burn, or I don't see a way out of this. So you know, we we. Ha yeah, that that really takes. It's so easy to not make the decision. Be like, you know what? Let's just wait and see. I <laughs> hope think, for a better day. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we'll come out of this pandemic because you're like timing like back then we we're timing the pandemic. Like, oh, is it going to be over? You know, mid year is it going to be over at the end of 2020? Yeah. Like you, you know, everybody's playing this timing game, and it, it's like, dude, we have to just make a call and say, all right, we have to we have to do this. We have to cut it. We have to cut more burn. Mm. So. No, but how did you then lead who was left? Because that's also the easy part is actually telling people, okay, it's over. Yeah, I, it's it's it it's hard because again, you care care about them, but it's like stabbing yourself repeatedly super. in the in the gut. If you cut too deep, if you yeah. cut too deep, if you cut too many people, there's not enough people left to run the show, yep. and so you're in deep trouble then. Um, well, who's gonna be in the boat? Yeah, still hates you. Yeah, they still hate you. <laughs> they still have doubts about the company. They're like, oh my gosh. Sprout's laying people off. We're gonna go under. You know, everybody's saying, "Shucks, this is it." Yep. Um. So one another like cardinal rule that we stuck to very closely was cut once and cut deep. Mm. Um. Otherwise, you end up doing a second round of layoffs and a third round of layoffs. And man, your second or third round, nobody trusts you anymore. You've lost all credibility with with people, with your employees, and then you're really in trouble, right? right. So that was one thing that we really stuck with. We we only wanted to do it once, and so we did it once, and we did it deep enough that we thought we're really okay. 
Now this is going to protect us until until we can get to a better space financially. How did you get the pipeline back? Because again, you you can't get to that without work, looking at your unit economics. Yeah. Right? Did you yeah. change pricing? What was that like? And then how did you get pricing well, up, okay. uh, pipeline back? So it, this was like a, this is a cultural and morale thing, I think. Because you're just, for us, we were just waiting for the market to recover. And then we were going to be back in action. But we needed to keep morale up and keep everybody on the same page with us. So a couple of things we did. So um, first, we introduced a new core value to Sprout. What is it? <laughs> uh, grit. Great. Yeah. We said, look, guys, we're adding, like, this is how serious 2020 is. We're adding a core value to Sprout. Grit. This is what we need. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be pretty. It's going to be really hard, but we have to stick it out. We have mm-hmm. to keep working our asses off and we're going to have, we're going to earn less money and we're going to have fewer people to help. It's just going to be hard. Everything about this is going to be harder. So we yeah. need grit. Um, and then second, we, we communicated transparently. Always. We talked about, I talked about our finances, our bank balance, how much runway we had left, like everything with every, with, with the whole company. Like yeah. this is where we're at guys. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this is the calls. This is the call that I'm making right now in the situation that we're in yeah um as as it kind of happened Mm -hmm. and then yeah those are some more of those things that we did uh and then we had uh we had hashtag we we had this hashtag cash flow positive wow so we introduced we introduced a hashtag just to make it easy for everybody okay guys and i and i told the guy and i told everybody in sprout look we're we're not we're not profitable this is like mid 2020, mm-hmm. the, like around the time we did the layoffs. He said, look, we're not profitable, which means that no bank will give us a loan. Nope. Uh, we're not growing, which means that no VC will give us money. Nope. So we have no capital. Mm-hmm. So what we have in our bank is what we have. And so, I mean, that's just like, we have to get cash flow positive or else we're going to die eventually. Correct. Um, that's the only path forward. It's the only path forward. So yeah. our next miles, our next big milestone as a company is being cash flow positive. And then that set a really like straightforward goal for everybody. And then it put into into context why we were reducing um, expenses here and why we weren't allowed to buy that and why we were now working from home, not from a nice office and like with free coffee and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't have massage Wednesdays or like this stuff that we did before, right? Um, So it put all that stuff in in the right context. And then then it allows us to celebrate when we did get cash flow positive. It was like, guys, we did it. We did it. We went through like some, one of the hardest times in like human or recent, you know, human history. Um, we came out of it. We're cash flow positive, and it was a big thing to celebrate. And that's such a milestone for a startup. Because yeah, a lot, a lot of people, and a lot of startups also just don't have a clear path towards yeah. profitability. Yeah. The moment you can prove to your team and to yeah. yourself and to your investor that just like a traditional sustainable business, mm-hmm. that you can get and will your team to a profit. Mm-hmm. That puts you in another echelon that not a lot of people get to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because a lot of startups rely on funding Mm-mm. for a runway to get done. Mm-hmm. But if you can will your team, that's a whole nother level of respect. Yeah. So mad respect for you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Well, it's a little easier in B2B SaaS. Like yeah. we're we're like as opposed to fintech or consumer, it is it's a bit easier to get there in B2B SaaS. But but yeah, it's still it was definitely an achievement. That, we were that's, happy about. that's the pivot <laughs> we actually did in yeah. DNA. So yeah. our, when we were talking, Mm-mm. the model, the primary model we were doing was ads. Mm-mm. So we create the supply, yeah. we we invest our resources to create sustainable podcasts. Mm-mm. But at one point we created the supply, we we had the biggest market share in Southeast Asia. Wow. But then realize, shit, where's the demand? Where are we going to make money? Yeah. The only revenue that we were getting back mm-hmm. then was through ads. Yeah. The problem with getting ads is that so the, the ads were too small. Yeah. The sales cycle were, were, were long. It's seasonal. Mm-mm. And we we don't get the lion's share because the creator gets it. Ah. It's like, shit, we're going to die. Wow. We don't do that. So we also did the SaaS route. We realized our superpower mm-hmm. was not… Uh, just creating whatever shows. Mm-mm. We create great shows at scale. Yeah. We had 230 shows, imagine. That's a lot. Not a lot of companies. Actually, I, I, I'm i pretty sure we're in the top five. That's like everybody. Yeah. You in, guys in, got everybody. Right. In, yeah. in the whole world. Yeah. 
So we productized that, mm-hmm. t- called it Pod Machine, mm-hmm. and sold it as B two B SaaS. Mm, that's cool. So now we have MRR. That's cool. Yeah, see that right. MRR, yeah. Which in ads, there's no such thing as MRR. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's true. Or you don't know when you're gonna make money. Yeah. There, there are months where like whoop ramp up. Yeah. But there are months like holy shit, this is so dry. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. so. That's what we had to do. But again, we we I got thrown several more. Um, curveballs. Yeah, you know when when things churn and all that, like oh, then you have to downsize. But yeah. you have a sustainable and repeatable yeah. business model. Now, walk me through 2021. So mm. 2020 was rough. Mm-hmm. 2021, just dude, you got so good to the point where you even bought Gian Delorama's product. Yeah, right. Yeah, so yeah. Ha- ha- walk yeah. me through the the yeah. high. So this is so super inspiring for those startups. That are in the trenches right now, who were who was just like Sprout Mm-mm. in 2020. If you just really do the right moves mm. and you rally your team mm. and you keep stay the course and believe and mm. bet on yourself, Mm-mm. there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light Walk at the end of the tunnel. Walk me through the yeah. light at the end of the tunnel. Stay gritty. Yes. Stay gritty. Stay tough. Um, so 2021 things started picking up around March. Mm. Yeah. So it's just like. You know, we were doing similar things to what we'd been doing. We were pushing the product out. We were getting getting sales demos. Okay. Um, but the, just the response in the market was starting to starting to get back. People were ready to spend again. Yeah, people were ready to spend again. I mean, companies were just like finally out of pandemic mode and starting <laughs> to make a decision on HR software. Yeah. Um, and so we started uh, getting some sales in and started picking up. Um, picking up the growth rate and that continued through 2021. I mean, wow. from March until the end of 2021, we're really like growing progressively. We got, we got, um, uh, cash flow positive in January. Uh, because we have a great cash cycle. The B2B SaaS again has a pretty good, you, clients pay up front, mm-hmm. um, for their subscription, things yep. like that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, so it's nice. you pivoted off. Oh, Dude, so SaaS nicer. is <laughs> fucking nice. SaaS I swear. Nice. I like it, but I'm a SaaS guy. So, yep. um, so cash flow positive January, and then we got profitable on the P and L in like July. Wow. Um, and so then we were sustained, like r- truly sustainable company. And then, and then our hashtag changed. So from, um, cash flow positive, it became a uh, zero profit hashtag zero profit. And the idea of that was like, we wanted to be profitable, but everything above profitability, we wanted to pump back into the Reinvest. business. Cause it's not like we're trying to like retain profits at the end of the year, you know, and we're, we're, we're still orienting on growth. Okay. Um, but it's funny because that 2021 is the year valuations were like Boom. insane for right. SaaS. Like mm-hmm. a SaaS business in America was raising at a hundred times ARR. What? A hundred times ARR. That was the that was the valuation rate in 2021 Are you in America. Hundred. Some were going for 120, 130 times. Like Deal, I think, was at 130 times yeah. ARR in yeah. 2021. They closed that. Um, but a bunch, uh, I mean, that, that was like, there's an article from Tom Tunga's, uh, SAS guy in, in the U S talking yeah. about this. That was the multiple hundred decks. So Holy shit. you won't, you won't get that in Asia. So, no. But, no. but, but, but still, 2021 was, was a of, perfect time. It was a great time to raise, right. but we didn't. Why? Uh, it was still like a little COVID in the Philippines. We were still a little bit unsure how the market was going to go with all the, you know, new strains and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were profitable and, and getting kind of still like, uh, I guess kind of, I really like, um, keeping things pretty tight in the company. Like we were still kind of retooling the business a little bit for yeah. our next like growth spurt. Um, so we were doing that. We were doing And that you were in control of your destiny because you were profitable. Yeah, we were profitable. So we didn't have to raise. Um, and then 2022 was when we, we were still growing really well. We were profitable. We were still profitable and we started really pumping because we started having excess money. We started pumping it into growth. Mm. Um, and that's when I was like, started seeing those growth levers that we were investing in starting to pay off and said, okay, let's go back to market. Uh, and raise around. Of course, every investor's like, this is now 2022 when investments sucked. 
Uh, <laughs> and they're like, where were you last year, bro? <laughs> you should have raised Man, that. multiples are uh, down. So funny. Multiples are down. People You're profitable. are scared. What are you doing? Right. Uh, but I, I wanted to, I, I could see that we could grow faster by burning some cash. So mm. we went back to market. That mm. is amazing. <laughs> All right. Now let's take our first break. And when we come back, we will now talk about scaling teams. Because this guy again told me the rule of three and ten. I thought I had the freaking holy grail. <laughs> But oh my God, it hit me hard. I want to get his perspective because he said it also blew up on his face. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It sure did. But let's talk about that more after the break. Hey, hustlers, are you tired of bank transfer fees and low interest rates on your savings? Say hello to GoTime Bank. GoTime Bank offers interest rates 50x higher than traditional banks. Enjoy this rate on your savings. No minimum amount. No deposit caps and no tasks or missions to complete. With GoTime Bank, you can make quick and secure transfers to other banks with three bank transfers per week. Plus, earn Go Rewards points and redeem them as cash with a simple tap in the GoTime Bank app. Experience the next level of banking with GoTime Bank. Download the app now or visit www.gotime.com.ph to experience next level banking. It's GoTime! Hey Hustlers, it's a brand new season and I have a brand new tool that will help you scale your startup properly as you grow your team and give them equity eventually. And if you want to have a record of ownership management, efficient equity workflow, and award grants digitally, Capita has you covered with CapMap. CapMap is designed to enable CapTable and ESOP management, as well as digital share insurance for companies across South and Southeast Asia. Also, Capita provides ESOP advisory services for you to set up your plan and engage your employees through equity awards. And trust me, this is a boon because as you grow your team, you want to give their best people a piece of the company that they're hustling for. Investing shares and giving ESOP is not easy if you don't have a product like this. So please do check it out and sign up now at Capita.com with a Q. Again, that's Capita.com with a Q. And it's free for companies that have under 25 stakeholders. Get ready to experience the power of seamless equity workflow management today. And we're back in the break. We are still with Patrick Gentry. He's a, such an amazing turnaround story. Uh, I'll always remember that now, bro. Because mm. I'm I'm still right in the thick of it. Mm-hmm. We, we went through that. We made a one cut, yeah. but deep. Yeah. It's good. But hopefully by end of next month yeah. or early August, we're already in the, nice. In the black. Nice. Nice. I, I, it's it so exciting. Your destiny. It's so close to be close. It's so great to be close it's to It's so that. exciting yeah. when you can taste it yeah. and smell it's it. Like, oh, like, oh shit, it's yeah. there. Yeah. Right? Start and I'll make sure these guys that yeah. are with me, yeah. have. it's all worth it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, I want right. to understand before we, we go and uh, talk about the rule in three mm. and ten. What was it like culture wise Mm-mm. after you rallied the team to mm-hmm. like, hey, hashtag cash flow positive, Mm-mm. hashtag zero profit? Yeah. What was it like when in your culture when you had this? And how did you, what did you discover about yourself and your team once you got over the hump? And also, I want to f- understand from a board perspective, Mm-mm. those people who are technically Pulling the noose on you already, like uh, uh, I'm nudging it, I feel it. Yeah. What were they? What were they like when things were good? Okay, so one thing to know: board meetings are easy when everything's going well, and they're hard. <laughs> Everybody's high fiving. Yeah, everybody's like, right? "Ooh, yeah, you're, you're so awesome! You know, great work!" And, uh, and <laughs> you're then, a great founder. <laughs> yeah. And then everything is not good when everything is oh, not going man. well. So like, whatever you put up, people are going to critique or like, oh, why are you showing the data this way? Or, you know, it, it, mm-hmm. it just like, that's the nature of the beast. Um, so yeah, when we got, when we got stuff back, people are like, wow, great, great work. This is great. This is going really well. Okay. Okay. We don't have to fire you. You're mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's amazing. Now, how about the team? Uh, team wise. So, you know, like, I don't know. Sprout, Sprout. So my, so my co-founder, Alex and I have been. His wife also. By my then. wife, my oh, wife and co-founder. The real Alex. boss. <laughs> <laughs> We've been like very focused on culture and Sprout from day one. So mm-hmm. I think 
Uh, overall, like the team weathered everything very well. Mm. Um, it was certainly hard and there was a lot of doubt among yeah. people, even people who had, been, who had been in Sprout a long time about, oh my gosh, are we going to make it through the pandemic or is Sprout really okay? I mean, Patrick says it's okay, but is it really okay? Um, yeah, there was like, there's still a lot of that, but then, then people could start feeling it coming back. Yeah, you know, we go back to five. The reimbursement working. is approved. <laughs> <There> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get, you can actually reimburse like coffee or something with a client. You know, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, and then like we we got to hashtag uh, we we got our profitability back, uh, mm -hmm. or we got we got to profitable, and then we. Got zero profit, and then we, and now the new hashtag is race to 10. Hashtag race to 10. Race to 10. 10 what million, does that mean? 10 million, million ARR. Holy We're almost shit. There. We're almost there. Amazing. Yeah, so now that's like, now everybody's like feeling that momentum of like, all right, let's get to 10 million ARR. It's like super I like exciting. that strategy. Just yeah. again, similar to us, like there's a number that we're trying to get to yeah. on an MRR. Like, all right, yeah. let's get to this number, yeah. rally behind it. Let's get to And it's number. so effective yeah. because though it might be a short term goal or whatever, right? Yeah. But it just la puts everybody at a laser focus that if it's not aligned toward that goal, yeah. you probably know that the answer is going to be no. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's that. Yeah. And it like, kind of lines with everybody on that very simple target. We're very particular about explaining that, you know, your revenue is just a reflection of how well you're serv serving your clients. And, exactly. You know, your rev revenue is really a consequence. It's not like, oh, we're just shooting for this because it's like the 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 goal. The really what we need to do, look at what you're doing and is it gonna help get us to this and this next step, right? Exactly. Um so we're we're pretty particular that way. But yeah, we really we really orient people around very simple yep. next amazing. steps. And you already mentioned it, culture. Mm -hmm. Again, for those people who haven't listened to this podcast yet. Look it up. It's going to be in the description box below on YouTube if you're listening on YouTube. Um, I had them on the show and one of the most um, memorable moments during that interview was when you told me the rule of, rule of three and ten. So yeah. for those people who don't understand what is the rule of three and ten, Patrick, what is the rule of three and ten again? <laughs> it's like when shit breaks in your company. <laughs> <laughs> It's basically it's uh so as it's these orders of 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 abstractness that get introduced to your org structure as your company grows. So when you're just a solo when you're just a founder, it's just you. You don't have to, yep. to delegate to anybody, solopreneur. Mm -hmm. And then you have three people in your company and all of a sudden you have to delegate some stuff and let go of some stuff. Um and so there's an there's a transition that happens there. There's a transformation or a revolution that happens. Yep. And then you're okay. And then you get to 10 people in your company. And all of a sudden, there's going to be somebody that's not directly reporting to that's you anymore. So layers now. Now you have layers. Uh -huh. And so like, now you have to deal with how to communicate your messages across multiple layers, which you never had to do before. Um, and then... So, and then it's multiples of three and 10 after that. So 30 is generally a, a time of revolution. Mm -hmm. 100 people is yep. the time. And then 300, which is where yep. Sprout is just Holy going shit. to now, which I, I'll tell you about a little <laughs> okay. bit later. So yeah. the biggest we've gotten was at around 60. Yeah, That's wow. my biggest headcount. Wow. Two markets. Wow. So Philippines wow. and Indonesia. And two markets. Ooh, it's tough. hard. So let me tell you. That whole two market thing is a whole. Bruh, it's uh, hard. It's super hard. But okay, let me walk you through. So I thought I had to, when you told me about this, like I even said the rule of three and 10 in a town hall one day. Yeah, <laughs> so, nice. Guys, I know things are breaking yeah. because we're just going through the rule of three and 10. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was even, I was even telling them about it, but my God, when it hit, mm -mm. I didn't even know it was hitting me. Yeah. And number two, there's no playbook. Yeah. Yes, you can be aware of it. Yeah. But That's what right. the fuck is going on? Yeah. There's just so much chaos going on. So That's right. walk me, I'll walk you through what happened yeah. in, in PA. Yeah. So when we met 2020, mm. right? We just literally released our very first uh angel round. Mm -mm. Right? Angel round. We have some money, mm -mm. right? Our my team's less than 10. Yeah. Easy. Everything's yeah. a direct one Easy. down. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um and prior in my, my previous teams in Party File and Chatbot BH. Mm. My peak's around 20. Mm -mm. And we're, maybe there's two layers, but everything is still directly one down. I know them. Yeah. To, when I look at their Slack, I know who that person yeah, is. Yeah, super. Right? Yeah. And then the pandemic happened. Mm -mm. 
Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, so this is the layer that I I never knew that was going to happen in mm-hmm. pandemic. Mm-hmm. Pandemic, we grew exponentially because during the pandemic, people were stuck at home. Yeah. Everybody wanted to be a podcaster. Yeah. We yeah. were the supercharger to do that. Yeah. So as you nice. grow your supply, you have to scale your team. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, so we grew that and we were able to raise our seeds. We raised 750K. Wow. Right? Mm. So great. I thought it was all fine and dandy. We have the best podcasters. All of these are chart toppers, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Nice. But now there's this new set of people that are working with me in Slack remotely Mm-mm. that do not know me and my antics yeah, and yeah. do not know that why does this guy cuss so much? <laughs> why is he so intense? <laughs> is he the devil really incarnate? Cussing, yeah. Is he a monster? <laughs> why does he work? Why does he hustle? Why is hustling so freaking toxic? Yeah, yeah. That before in Party File and Chat, I never change. Yeah. It's just that these guys have never seen me in person yeah. that I will push you hard. Yeah. But bro, during merienda time, I'll ask you, do you want donut? Yeah. Right? I yeah. don't have the donut moment anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's true. And now all of a sudden, there's two layers of it. Mm-mm. Where, and here's where my biggest problem Mm-mm. was. I thought, Mm-mm. mistake number one. Yeah. I thought those people that were me at the earliest stage of the game. Yeah. When the time comes, just because they were good at what they were doing. Yeah. They would be ready to lead a team. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was I wrong? <laughs> because I dealt with this shit, bro. Yeah. You, you know what I dealt with? Mm. People who are superstars and they're really young. It's not their fault. Mm-mm. But I wish I knew this better. Mm-mm. When they're super young, they just don't know how to delegate. Yeah. Yeah. My biggest problem before was like, hey, why are you so overworked? Yeah. And I look at the load of your people and they're and so chill. Right. Huh? Mm-hmm. How, why, how does that work? And they yeah. all, they're the mindset I had to battle with just because they were so young. It's like, I don't want to delegate because I don't want to make them go through pain. What? Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden when shit breaks, where did the fingers point? Yeah. That's right. Back to you. Yep. That's right. There was going to And now out. there is this mutiny. All of a sudden, mm-hmm. I was the devil incarnate. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what? Well, I'd never go to work and say, hey, let's fuck people up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I want to know how you guys went through this because easy my God. Cast that way. My God. Yeah. It was, it was so hard. And then that the realize is that the middle management, mm. there's a real when who I put there really matters. Mm. But, because experience mm. and age really comes into mm-hmm. play. Because mm-hmm. I don't care if you're a superstar producer. Yeah. You're a superstar creative. Yeah. If you don't get the basic tenet that you need to delegate so that yeah. we can all balance out the boat, yeah. then you're not ready for the prime time. Yeah. Yep. Right? No. Nope. Yep. Super. I so mean, how, did, how did you go through the one of those consequences of, of those uh-huh. like three? And those, that three and ten rule is like, it's not always right at 30 or right at, you know, 10. No, but you'll like, never you, know. But somewhere around there. And yeah. then you don't know when it's happening, right? You're yeah. like… God, why is everything so hard? And like, what's happening here? And then you realize, oh man, we're just in this, we're just at that point where we've grown to that level. Mm. Um, okay, so in Sprout, I mean, it's been, we've gone through one, two, three, three, at least three. Okay. Um, three breakages. Yeah, three breakages. Right. So, well, the multiverse just unraveled. Yeah, just unraveled, man. <laughs> Actually, first, so first was around 40. Wasn't okay. 30, what happened at 40? 30? Okay. 30, um, 40. At 40, we started having like, like really like um i guess real communication issues it was like like how the communication issues were really a result of the lack of process so 40 40 people was a process issue okay um 40 people was like we didn't have the processes and structures in place to like facilitate proper communication proper like handling of of accountability and tasks and things like this um and it just like it and what we noticed then, the way we noticed it was everybody coming into Sprout was like, oh my gosh, you guys are so gulo. <laughs> you have no process for anything. And we're like, yep, yeah, we're yep. a startup. You know, we're a startup. <laughs> being like, being like, oh, we're a I'm startup. I'm looking at like, my team now. <laughs> yeah. Does this why I understand about anything? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it was hard to like, it was hard to 
put process in place because it was like, uh, that's like not a startup. Just like you just do shit, you know, you get shit done. And like, it's understood that everybody just works on everything and Figure everybody it out. gets stuff mm-hmm. done, you know, mm-hmm. and that just breaks down when you start having a, a bigger team. So for us, that was 40. Yes. Um, and then fast forward to 100. That was our second one. Oh, okay. At 100, um, what was the big issue? Culture. Culture. Wow. When, yeah. And what, in what way? Are, are there now silos? Are there no. well, factions? Yes, silos. But what it really was, was we didn't have a good way of communicating our culture. Um, like, what does it mean to be Sprout? So we had core values. Okay. Um, but they were core values that were super loose. Like, uh, now, now, now. That was a core value. <laughs> what does that even <laughs> like, mean? Like, get shit done right now. I don't <laughs> care about anything else. Just do it right now. That was yeah. a core value of the start of And the start of Sprout, that made total sense. Yeah. Because in, in, in when we were first starting the company, everything was an emergency. <laughs> um, getting customer feedback was an emergency, you know. A customer mm. who was upset was an emergency. Well, a customer who's upset is always an emergency. Yeah. But, um, like, everything had to be, like, now, now, now. Mm. Um, another of our core values was um, like one percent. So getting one percent better every day. The one percent rule. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I've, I've um, heard of this. Yeah. From, so like from just constant improvement. Saul Moya of Flower Store. Yeah. They have that. Uh, the, yeah, the, nice. the, the, the Exelazada boys. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah they have that one uh, percent rule too. Yeah. And we had so we had, and we had so four core values, mm-hmm. and then they kind of were were very loose. Like now, now, now is just mm-hmm. like. Three three words, right? Um, <laughs> three of the same word. Yeah. Uh, and so, and then people started, like, weren't really understanding, like, somebody would, like, yell at somebody to get something done and really come down on them hard. And then they'd be like, well, it's now, 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 you know? And it's like, yeah, but, like, th- that's not Don't really... Don't do it like that. Yeah, not, mm. not like that. But so, there were really things getting lost in, in our culture that we had yeah. set up. And so, it was like, like it was, it just was getting worse and worse from like a hundred to 110 people, 120 people. Alex and I are like, holy shit, like what's going on here? This is, and you don't recognize becoming, your like, team anymore. Yeah. Like you don't know everybody anymore. You don't know everybody by name. It's like, uh, people don't know you directly. And right. then they're just ha- under and this some was in manager the pandemic like where they've never seen them. you in person. Even this is before, this is before, oh, this before, is like, pa. okay. Yeah. This is like 20. Gosh, like 2017. Bah, like what? early, yeah. Okay. Man, we went through these transitions. Okay. Yeah, it was like a crisis. Like Alex and I were like, oh my God, this is breaking. So so <laughs> we we redid our core values. Okay. Um, we picked up a really good tip from HubSpot. Uh, the HubSpot chief product officer, I think, said, okay. treat your culture like a product. Mm-hmm. Um, the customer is your employee. So in the same way that you, when you're building a product, you get customer feedback all the time. So your product your, is your culture in this context. So you're trying to improve that product. So you're getting feedback from your employee, which is your Got customer it. of the product. Got it. So like we were asking our employees, what's wrong? You know, uh, what are the issues? Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. We redid our core values mm-hmm. um, and we instituted our pledge, Sprout Pledge. What is a Sprout Pledge? <laughs> I pledge to Sprout yeah. that I will be poggy. Uh, what, what is it? It's a basically it's like a distillation of our uh, core values, and then we did that every single day. Everybody in Sprout would stand up at three p.m. and what? recite, and <laughs> recite the Sprout me? pledge. I shit you not. Wow, <laughs> we did that every day. Okay, it was like guys, this is what it means to be a Sprout. Okay, wow. and so it was like quite culty, and okay. we were like really proud of it being really culty. Um, so we would like joke around. Mm. I I would love having interviews with people around 3 p.m. because mm. they would be come in for an interview and then all of a sudden everybody in Sprout would stand up and recite this this like sermon together. Oh. Well, BNA um, guys, at least we don't have a <laughs> yeah, <at> least, <laughs> we don't have that yet. <laughs> but have look that. out if we start. <laughs> At 3 right. p.m., 3 o'clock there. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But these are like we really took measures to like make it really clear to everybody in Sprout what it means to be a Sproutling. Okay. And what is our culture? What, and then, and then, of course, that's only the surface level stuff because your culture is proven in who you fire, who you hire, um, all these kind of... What you these, tolerate. Yeah, what you tolerate. You know, what gets rewarded and what gets punished. Mm-hmm. Um, these kinds of things, right? Those are, those are really where your culture gets, mm-hmm. gets um, put on display. But, but you need this kind of like 
we needed these fundamentals in place in a lot more like solid way. So now fast forward to 300 employees, which we hit. Wait, before we do that, I, yeah. I want to uh, I want to ask you one sure imp- important question because you said you need to treat the product. I mean, your culture like a product. Yeah. And if you're really going to treat it like a product, then you need to have a PM of your culture. Ah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And for us, that came in the form when we hired our head of HR, mm. which was senior. Yeah. Because prior to this, this is what I was dealing with. Yeah. And let me know if you dealt with this shit too. Yeah. So, yeah, I tried asking everyone, every one person of like, what's wrong with our culture? What's wrong with you? How can yeah. we do things better? Yeah. And it varies yeah. and people don't know how to decompress. So you took it all mm. along with all the emotion mm. and asked the founder, Mm-mm. dude, you care. So you're going to bring that to sleep. Mm-mm. So it weighed down on you. Mm-mm. Weighed down on me. Weighed down on my co-founder. Yeah. And we felt like shit. It was like, oh, yeah. are we really this evil? Yeah. Turns out we just didn't really know any better. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And you need to hire a professional HR because yeah. it really feels at that point we're around 20, 30, 40. Yeah. I felt like a guidance counselor. Yeah. Yeah, you do a lot. You do. Yeah. Or why, It's like, why am <laughs> I dealing with this drama? Yeah. Because yeah. I, I can dissect the 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 problem itself. Like, yeah. okay, you're demotivated. I get it. Yeah. How can we do things better? Mm-mm. But imagine you have to still bring that home. Mm-mm. Yeah. And you're human too. You freaking get fucked in the head as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But when we started putting a professional HR who's done this before, yeah. who knows how to navigate and we rally behind her, mm. our, uh, our attention became better, attrition mm. be, uh, became less. Nice. And there. Nice. And our, the, the whole culture just stabilized and also resembled the type of culture that I made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, yeah. so good. But yeah. I know that will break eventually. Mm-mm. I want to understand from you, did mm-hmm. you guys go through that too? Did you hire a professional PM or your HR well, for, for your product, which is your culture? Yeah, so we we promoted, so we brought on this lady as a legal counsel, actually, a lawyer, first lawyer mm-hmm. in Sprout. Okay. Um, but she had a deep HR background. Okay. And then she was like crushing it there. So then she became like, Head of legal, okay. or and then she was like legal manager, and then like head of legal. So give her and flowers. Then, What's her name? Head Let's of give CS, her a shout out. Arlene, Arlene De Castro. Arlene De Castro. Arlene De Castro. Shout you get kudos. You. you get kudos. For me, it's Jean Bernabe, yeah. our HR. Nice. Okay, there you go. She's just like, man, she she crushed it. She went like up, 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 up in the org. She's now chief people and customer officer. Wow. Yeah. And so, she, what was her superpower and what was her magic? Well, so superpower, like beyond very deep expertise in HR because she was an HR manager for years and years and then put herself through law school mm. to get her law degree wow. and then opened up a law firm and then joined oh, she Sprout. Has a law firm. Yeah, she has a law Amazing. firm on the side, right? It's crazy. Mm. Um, and then was part of Sprout. So very deep expertise in the field, but also just she and Alex and I worked so closely together for so long because she joined when we were quite small. Mm. She really knew what Sprout culture was meant to be and 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 then with her same as you with her expertise was able to like kind of take on all the issues without getting like really like emotionally yes. entangled. Yes, because oh as my a God. founder you tend to get emotionally entangled. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. all of a sudden you're gaslighting yourself. Yeah, yeah. And then that feedback you also don't know how to unpack. Mm-mm. And the most important thing is how how do you solve it? Yeah. And as a founder, most of us, unless you have an HR background, Mm-mm. are just not designed. To Stay solve hard. that prob- problem. Because again, for us, okay, we have a hammer. There's a, w- there's a mole sticking out. Yeah. Whack. Yeah. Whack. <laughs> Whack. Like everything's that, that's our move. Everything's Whackable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right? True. But some t- sometimes you don't need a hammer. Mm-mm. Sometimes you need a chisel. Mm-mm. That's right. You know, uh, yeah. to, to solve it. And again, the key here is when you feel like things are breaking, especially if probably you're around two layers down, Mm-mm. that's when you should start considering hiring a professional Mm-mm. HR. Yeah, bring on some seniority. Because I lost so many people Mm-mm. that I wish I still have now Mm-mm. because I just didn't have the right HR. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. a good lesson. Yeah. Okay. Now, 300. <laughs> okay. What, what do you need at 300? 300. Oh my God. 300. Uh, okay. So 300. <laughs> we're going through it right now. Okay. Um, but it's not as painful as the earlier What's like, the issue now at 300? 
I, you know, I talked about it in the last GA, actually, okay. our last town hall in okay. Sprout. I told everybody, guys, okay. hey, I explained all this to them. Like, look, there are these times in the company where you go through this. We're at that point right <laughs> so you now, did guys. It too. You, you explained them the I, rule I, three and Yeah, ten. I did. The whole company. <laughs> guys, this is where we're at. Okay, this happens. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, man. Sh- why not? Get oh. everybody on the same page. Guys, be aware of this. This is a thing. Okay. Um, and I was, I was saying, you know, I'm trying to put my finger on it. Uh, well, XCOM, because this can't, has come up in XCOM, is okay. like, shit, what's happening? Uh, <laughs> I think it's an accountability thing now. Mm. Because what's happened is we have more specialization than we've ever had in the company. Got it. So like one project, instead of being like one or two people is now like five people across three divisions. You know, because we have so much more specialization, we have so many more departments and so many more kind of functions that are very, uh, um, you know, uh, deep, very unique. Mm -hmm. Like you have one person who's just involved with like the online content production. Got it. You know, like all these different pillars of marketing. We have different people, different agencies helping us. Mm. Specialists. yeah, Yeah, specialists, all specialists. So... Now I'm just like the 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 idea of like bureaucracy starts to really. So the creep now in. now now is a wait wait wait. Oh my gosh, yeah, it feels like that for, <laughs> for me. Shit, I mean you can imagine as a as and a we're founder used to that pace. when I'm used to like yeah running. It's like wait what 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 is the timeline? <laughs> Who's involved? Why are all these people in this meeting? I enter a meeting and there's like six people in it. <laughs> who needs to be here? Who doesn't need to be here? Everybody who doesn't need to be here, just get out. <laughs> <laughs> Save yourself the time. I just saved you the time, right? Just oh, get man. out. You can like join another meeting. Or, uh-huh. So yeah, it feels like bureaucra- bureau- bureaucratic a little bit. And then we were like, so a lot of companies, what they do at that, when they when they start getting there is they hire like program managers or mm. pro- or project managers. And then these people, their job is to coordinate across all of these other people to get these projects yeah. done. And we were just like, fuck that. We're not going to be that company. I'm sorry. Maybe we'll get there. We'll get there, but Uh, not, not, no. But you don't need a babysitter. We don't need babysitters for people. Mm. Like, so, but now it's, but you know, we don't have it figured out. Mm. So, um, we're, we're, we're figuring our way through. Next time I'm, next time you have me on, I'll tell you. Tell me how how you go from 300 to 600. Exactly. From 300 (laughs) to 600. 600, Yeah. From 300 (laughs) to 900. I'll tell you what we did. I got it. Um, but it's an accountability. I think it's an accountability thing. We're, we're, we're working on it. Okay. Knowing what you know now. Mm. Okay. It's because you had a heads up. Mm-mm. And you thought you knew like, oh, yeah. okay. This is going to be scalable yeah. until it's not. Yeah. Until it's not. What it are works the until you, it doesn't. Correct. What, yeah. what are the things you thought you, you wish you knew now? It, working in hindsight, when you got hit in these, uh, mm. these, these inflection points or these forks in the road. Yeah. So one, this is stupid actually. I'm, I'm stupid for this. I can just like- We all do. All right. Let's right? just like, I don't know why I ever thought this, uh, but when I was starting Sprout, I was really thinking, I had it in my head that we had this culture of Sprout that was like the bedrock that we had built the company on and it was never going to change. You know, mm. it was like the, the culture of, mm. of Sprout. And it's like not true. Your right. culture, the culture of your business needs to, needs to evolve as the business evolves, Got right? Um, and so you're constantly tweaking your culture in little right. ways. Like, mm-hmm. for example, when we first started Sprout, it was very family culture. Mm. Um, we knew everybody very personally. We knew we were like very deeply connected with everybody. And you can do that because you're a small team. You're under incredible pressure. So you yep. need that personal bond and personal connection to like get through it together. Yep. You know, you have people like your se- most senior people are like in your office crying because it's just like, <laughs> it, it just got too much. You know, you right. get, you, you see somebody hit their breaking point in your oh, office. Man. You're like, wow, this is like, this person has just carried the load as far as they can. And now they're just dumping That's it. it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So you need that like really deep, like personal connection. Um, but then as the company grows, you know, that's not scalable. So then you have to tweak the culture and become more like a, more like a sports team. And, you know, correct. Only Vin kind of Diesel can solve everything with family. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's right. That's right. Vin Diesel you have and to cars, read it like man. a team, you know, cause family, yeah. I, I forgot who I got it from. 
You cannot run your startup like a family yeah. forever. Yeah. Because families compromise. Yeah. Super. You cannot compromise in a startup. You can't hold somebody accountable when like you can't you don't hold your like sibling accountable. It's harder to hold them right. like, very accountable. Exactly. Um, so it doesn't scale well. So just that was a uh, one of the really big ones, I would say. Um, that was the second crisis, right? Mm. And then I think um maybe another one is hiring like finding, really spending time to find very high level people earlier in the journey. Yes. Yeah. I think that's that's definitely one. That I think every people. first every first time found. I mean, it's not my first first startup, but every like early found. It's my first startup that's that I've really carried all the way. Yep, uh, well, yep. Alex and I, of course, but yeah. So I think that's a common one. But yeah, hiring senior people earlier. I agree. Okay, yeah. So also. There, there are people that you feel like, oh my God, they're such, so, so great. Until you realize that that's a poison pill. Yeah. Like, yeah. Shit, that's yeah. the wrong hire. Yeah. Super. Well, I'll tell you that. So that was a, that's a big lesson or, or something that I became aware of quite early, but I'll pass on to everybody. Man, the higher level this, the person that you're hiring, the more likely you're going to fuck it up. Yes. Um, and it's going to cost you. And it's going to really cost you. Because it's so, because the higher level, the higher, the harder it is to find the right person who's going to come into your company and be a perfect culture fit, which is the most common problem. Hard. Um, and then, and then be really successful, like have the right amount of hands on and the right amount of 30,000 foot view, mm. you know, I mean, man, it's hard. really hard. Those yeah. senior hires are the are the, so difficult to make, and they they're the, one of the most painful mm -mm. because, dude, they eat up your runway. Yeah, and those wrong hires yeah. when you realize they're wrong hires, they've already done your damage to your culture. Yeah. Also, yeah, because typically those wrong hires, and I've had this a couple of times uh, where this happened, they don't just fade into the sunset quietly. Yeah, yeah. They flame Bruh. out. They <laughs> like flame out and inferno. they <laughs> fuck everyone up. Yeah, man. Yeah. And then all of a brutal. sudden, why is there a mutiny? Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is yeah. going on, yeah. right? It, so it's hard. So mm. be very careful, especially not just on, on the higher levels, but who you promote as leaders. Yeah. Because... Yeah, who you promote is telling everybody what kind of culture you have. Correct. Yeah. Because... A lot of people, and unfortunately, I, I I wish I knew this better because mm. I was just running it like a family. Mm -mm. Like, oh, they were here early. Yeah. I will promote you yeah. and you will be a better leader. Yeah. And some people just need yeah. time. Yeah, they to need get time there. or they need, broad, they need to broaden their experience in another mm -hmm. company. Or Correct. So you need to get stuff. people who are adults in the room who have done this before. Yeah. Because it takes a lot of emotional and mental mat maturity. Mm -hmm. To really lead a team mm -hmm. and still be, because I have the same shit mm -hmm. on the now, now, now pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the 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 key word, and I, I credit Minette Navaretta for mm. this, is you know self mastery. Mm, yeah, yeah. If you if I sm smell a reek of of insecurity, yeah, that you're the pasimun. Oh, let's go inuman. Yeah, let's go and do all of these things, yeah. right? Yeah. And you don't nurture because you know what what happens. All those those small talks, mm -hmm. but you can you can kind of tell. What type of conversations go happen at the back with the murmurs that you hear yeah. and how you're now being perceived yeah. and who's instigating those? Yeah. If you get those people at, and the leadership, then all of a sudden they're the ones, again, having starting this mutiny mm -mm. against you. Mm -mm. It's going to cost you a lot of money. Yeah. It's going to cost you a lot of headaches yeah. and it might cost you your team. Mm -mm. Yeah, and then all of that stuff leads to your company not growing the way you want it to grow. And yeah, look at your board painful. like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's, <laughs> don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't change. Yeah. I'm yeah. just rallying. I'm trying to do my shit. But <laughs> again, at one point, you need to level up mm -hmm. from being a founder to becoming a CEO, which we will talk about when we come back for the last part. This also, again, amazing stories. With Patrick Gentry of Sprout. But let's talk about that more after the break. Hey, hustlers, PayMongo is your payment gateway for business growth. With PayMongo, you can accept online payments from your customers through Visa and MasterCard, debited credit cards, GCash, Maya, RabPay, online banking, BNPL, installments, and many more. 
all with just one platform. For business owners, online payment collection used to be such a pain. Long negotiations and paperwork, complex developer docs, and having to gather all these proofs of payment from your customers would be a serious drag in your operations. Now with just one partner, you can simplify all of that and focus on growing your business. Paymongo's story showcases the resilience of Filipino businesses in today's digital economy. During the pandemic, they became a lifeline to countless businesses by helping them go online quickly, serve their customers, and generate revenue. They have since grown exponentially and now support thousands of businesses from SMEs to venture-backed startups and even the most established enterprises in the country. Paymongo's products allow you to accept all types of payments with or without a website and they continue to expand into more streamlined financial services. So sign up for free today. Visit paymongo.com to get your business activated in one week or less. Hey hustlers, I know how difficult it is to do fundraising at the moment for any startup or any business. And especially given this market where investors are afraid to write any significant check that would help your startup either scale or extend your runway, your options are very, very limited. But don't worry, I think I found a solution that just might help. So if you're seeking capital for your Sari Sari store, online business, restaurant, or startup, Ccap's got you with a 24-7 fast and easy online loan application process, minimal paperwork, and real-time updates. Say goodbye to long lines and long waits with CCAP, UBX Philippines' online lending marketplace for micro, small, and medium enterprises. Choose from a wide variety of loan products from 5,000 pesos up to 1 million pesos from trusted lenders. With CCAP, you can apply for a business loan that's tailored to your needs, whether it's for capital, production, operations, or expansion. And check this out. You can apply anytime, anywhere in the Philippines. So what are you waiting for? Sign up at www.ccap.ph. That's www.seekcap.ph and apply for a loan now. We're back from the break. We are still with Patrick Gentry again. Told us the real of three and ten. So if you are a startup founder, if you're scaling, beware. But here's the thing: I wish I knew this sooner. I wish I called you during those days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, bro, I'm experiencing this. I've yeah. been gone through this because you know you're doing well if you're experiencing it. That yeah. means your team is scaling. Mm-hmm. Good problem. That means there's these are these are typically. The more money, more problems yeah. type of problem. Yeah, that's right. right? Like, oh shit, you're yeah. now having to become a founder Mm. and mature to be an exec. Mm -mm. And that's the last part I want to dissect here. Mm -mm. Walk me through, so all of these things are happening, Mm -hmm. really, 3 and 10. Mm -hmm. And there's some metamorphosis that you have to go through as a founder. So I'll share, I'll I'll take a first step. Sure. Believe it or not, I learned how to mellow down. Oh wow! Really? This is mellow. Was, this is this is mellow run. Okay. This is wow. this is mellow. I okay. was an intense motherfucker for a long time. Because <laughs> my 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 flavor of leadership is based on sports, Mm-mm. basketball. Mm-mm. So I lead my team as if it's a basketball team. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you straight up: you're fucking up. You're not covering your man. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I'll scream if I need to. Yeah. I don't care about your feelings. Yeah. But we live now in a day and age where there's multiple generations of people. Mm-mm who are probably older than Gen X. Mm-hmm. Some of them are boomers. Mm-hmm. But a, ma- a vast majority of who I work with are Gen Z. Yeah. And they're just not built for this. Yeah. And if we're ever going to lead to uh, my, my team to where it needs to be, it's not going to be them mm-hmm. who I'll only need, also need to adjust. It has to be me. So yeah. I'll lessen down on the cussing. Yeah. I've used nice. more synonyms nice. and metaphors and similes, <laughs> nice. you know? Nice. Um, and I've learned, because I was fighting it for a bit. <clears throat> yeah. Fighting it for a bit for in terms of how that uh, looks like. And I also changed the way I run meetings. Mm-mm. Before, I used to run town halls every every Monday. Mm. Wow. And it was a huge meeting. It took, And I gave everybody, hey, what happened to you? Over, and then I realized it's a two to three hour meeting. Yeah. Half of the Monday is gone. Yeah. It's like, shit, we cannot do this anymore. Yeah. So I learned how to really dissect and really trust my leaders, mm. but still have that one-on-one meeting with them. Mm-mm. 
we call it our ops meetings mm-hmm. where yo okay these are the metrics I need to take yeah. care you to take care of what are the problems mm-hmm. and these are the metrics that you need to show me don't tell me I hate I hated mm-hmm. when you're giving me an update because mm-hmm. most updates are glossed over yeah yeah, you're only telling me what I need to, uh, what you want me to know. Yeah, but if you're gonna show me graphs Mm-mm. that tell me otherwise, Mm-mm. I don't need your update. Mm-mm. Let's solve this together. But it's you who will be driving. I'm riding shotgun. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. So those little things. Yeah, but really, it's just me mellowing down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's hilarious. How about I'd love you? to meet the high high energy Ron. <laughs> it's still the same guy, but with just more cussing. You more can actually cussing. tell if you're listening to yeah. if you've listened to Hustle Share before. Mm. 2019 and 2020, mm. there's not any sentence that I didn't say f or ish yeah. and whatever. <laughs> nice. Now I've meddled down. It's nice. also it's a reflection in the podcast. Cool. For you, what was the transition and what were the key milestones when mm-hmm. you've said, okay, I'm no longer just a founder because mm-hmm. uh, being a founder zero to one yeah. is a totally diff- different job description Super. than becoming one to 10 and now mm-hmm. 10 to 100. Yeah. You're now a CEO yeah. that reports to a board and mm-hmm. need to act and perform as one. Yeah. What's that like for you? Um. Okay, so first of all, it's not something that like you prepare for or study or something like that. It's just something that happens. So just like just the rule of three and ten. Yeah, just like the rule of three and ten. Shit's gonna hit the fan. Just let it happen. Yep. Um, I was definitely not uh, ready to be a CEO when Sprout was like two employees. Yeah. Um, but it's okay because I didn't need to be Correct. right back then. Um, but you're just Patrick. I was just Patrick. I, I started as managing. I think I gave myself the title of managing director when we mm. were starting Sprout mm. because I, in fact, I was not comfortable with the title of CEO. Okay. And then eventually I was like, okay, I need to change my title now. I guess I'll be founder and CEO in, in the business card or whatever. So, but one of the things that you have to be super aware of is that your job, that you have to go through those, uh, evolution that that evolution as a as a founder like you have to reinvent yourself yep. and like basically retool how you do things mm-hmm. many many times as the company grows so what i mean to say is you can't have this idea you can't be static yep you can't be static like if you want to have a successful company you have to be ready to do the work to study to be introspective to really take time to mm-hmm. think about shit, what am I doing wrong? What do I what do I need to what do I need to change about my approach to my everyday job, like what I do every day? And so that has to be on, on kind of on the top of your mind and you have to be keeping on top of it because otherwise your company's going to outgrow you. Yep. And then you and then you're kind of screwed. Like your company right. is like leaderless, rudderless, right? Yep. Maybe one of the biggest transitions, and you you, you touched on it several a couple a couple <laughs> times, like moving from being the the owner to being an employee, because and that happens when you get investors. Correct. Yes, because before investors, maybe you like you own hundred percent of equity, full control. Like everything rolls up to you. It yeah. doesn't roll up to anybody else, right? Yep. It, it, the the buck stops with you. Correct. Nobody else. Then you get a board of directors and then you take on money and they take money from people. They take equity and then then you report to them. You work for the board. And you work for the board. So you have become an employee. And so I think a lot of founders don't understand the implications of that fully sure. or maybe they, maybe they don't think it through enough. But just make sure that you think it through and understand that. Right? That's what you're giving up by taking on money. That's what you're giving up by taking on money. Um, and that's fine. For a lot of startups, like you don't have a choice. Like if Sprout, mm-hmm. if we didn't raise capital, um, we're going to have competitors who are raising capital and they're just going to have so much more money. Correct. They're going to crush us. Yeah. So to stay competitive, we kind of need to raise. Yeah. And like a lot of other indus- a lot of other like, tech industries work that way. Like if you're not raising, you know, you shouldn't be in the game. Got it. Um, versus the company that I was in before, KMC. Mm-hmm. Uh, where Man, we, they're we, everywhere. We never, yeah, mm. we, we we never we bootstrapped that business because we didn't have to raise from VC because yeah. it was a different industry. Mm. Um, but yeah, in tech, fundraising fundraising is part of it, and then you become an employee. That is amazing. All right, before I let you go, we cannot end this episode without giving us your top five founders. Mm, wow, this good. is gonna be very quickly. Again, let's cool. give roses to yeah. our 
for our peers. Outside this room. Outside, outside this room. room. Again, you cannot pick yourself. Can't, you cannot pick, pick me because that's going to be a joke. Okay, okay. That's, <laughs> that's two off of my list. All right. Shit. Who's in the t- your first pick? Uh, uh, OG. Who's OG? Paul Rivera. Paul Rivera <laughs> of Caliber. I agree. That's right. Why? Caliber. Because he's an OG, man. He's, mm. he's like, he's he's a real entrepreneur. Correct. Like that guy is in so many different things and he's been in so many different things for so long. Um, Gritty. Yeah. Epitome of grit too. Yeah. He had to of grit. do cuts he multiple through, times. He went through ups and downs. Ooh. Man. Yeah. He was, and he, and he really took time um, when I was founding Sprout. Mm. He was the first guy that I met like in the ecosystem. Wow. Like he was the first founder that I was able to connect with and we sat down we had lunch and he was just like yeah you know okay this is how it is here these are the startups Mm -hmm. these are the founders have you met this person have you met this person and then he introed me and he introduced us to our um who who would become our seed investors kickstart yeah kickstart kickstart and wavemaker that's he made amazing. both of those intros yeah Paul Paul Santos yeah in a minute yeah in a minute yeah exactly all right second pick uh another one okay Farouk Farouk, Farouk Marali. Marali. Yeah. I don't know where Farouk is now. I know. I think, Indonesia, M-Klinica. I think. I think okay. Yeah, yeah M Clinica. I think he's more focused on Indonesia. I think they're growing a lot more there. Yeah. But again, OG. And I just really like Farouk. Like, yeah. we have a really good time. We're, we're both from Vancouver, Canada. Like, before, I did not before know you were here. A Canuck. Well, I'm, I'm like, uh, half Canadian and I went to school there. I grew God. up in the US but I spent I a lot of time in Canada. I didn't know you had 604 in you, bro. That's, yeah, that's right. That's right, man. I love about, that place. I didn't, I didn't even hear that boat. Okay. <laughs> no, no. No, I went, right. yeah. So, yeah, I like, I like Farouk and again, OG, man. He's like, that's amazing. He's still, he's still trucking. Still Pacific Northwest represent yeah, that's right, right there. That's right. Okay. Well, who's your third pick? Um, Who do I have on my list? Oh, I have one. Uh, Todd Schweitzer. Who is that? So I've never Todd <laughs> Schweitzer. I'm like br- brutalizing his name. Okay. Uh, Brancas founder. Ah, oh, Todd. Yeah, right, Todd. Right. Okay. Todd okay. Schweizer. So Brancas is easily one of the best fintech companies yeah. in the region, not yeah. just the Philippines. Yeah. So the Philippines. What 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 is it about Todd? Regional. Uh, we're co we're co portfolio we're portfolio mates in um in uh of, make, of no. B next. Oh, B next. Yeah. Got it. Well, probably probably Kickstart too. I don't I don't know if Kickstart's in Broncos, right. but I, but B next and then we, I I just like have a lot of respect for you know how he's able to articulate his message. Nice. Like he's a very good speaker. Amazing, and which is which is important to like be able to share your vision to you know if you're at an event if you're with employees or partners. Mm-hmm. He's super good at that. So Todd, I got to have you. I've, yeah, I've been knocking at the door. You should Intro, you should please. have him on here. Yeah, yeah cuz he'll he's a good speaker. He'll he'll right, be entertaining. You. He'll right. have a good time with him. Perfect, perfect. Fourth uh, pick. Nichelle, Nichelle Gaba. Nichelle yeah, Gaba. Michelle, oh, P-Dex, man, P-Dex, my man, my yeah. man. Well, yeah. So what what is it about Nichelle again? Very very amazing hustle. Yeah. Uh, I've had her, him on the show multiple times. Yeah. Uh in in his original Pdex one and we also had a Sunicorn session. Yeah. When he raised a Series B. Yeah, um, amazing. W- super, what's what's great about Nichelle in your opinion? Uh super gritty, super tough. Super, super tough founder and in super a super humble. tough market. Yeah. Yeah, and very humble. He's like he's like he's like me. He's kind of like uh, well, I don't know if I don't know how true this is, but it seems like he's very like uh, not super out there at events and like going out and and like doing big things, mm-hmm. but like he's crushing it in yep. uh, in his work. So. Like a Sasquatch. Yeah, the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like in, in, yeah, in he's the caves. there, but you can't <laughs> see him. Yeah, right. he's there, but you can't see. Okay, him. but he's hustling. Yeah, All right. hustling hard, man. That's a competitive space. Crypto Perfect. is like super competitive. Yeah. Last and final pick. Top five founders or um, Patrick Gentry. A new one. Uh, a new new one. Camille Ang. Camille Ang of Hive Health. Hive Health. Yeah. What yeah. is it about YC founder? Well, what is it about? Um, because she's like tackling a really tough problem. Yep. And that takes that takes balls. <laughs> um. So yeah, I have, I have respect for that. And you know, she's like a really fun, bright, yep. bright personality. She's she's good for the ecosystem. And did she worked government before? And yeah. if that's your origin story, which I've had her on the show too, again, check it out in the description box below. Yeah. Um, it will be 
there if you want to check. So that yeah. is such an amazing yeah, list. Cool. Thank yeah, you right? so much, bro. Yeah. But before I let you go, invite people over. What's next for you guys in Prout? Again, we're gonna. I'm gonna have you when you're at 900. Yeah. Let's see what let's breaks. Get to 900. <laughs> let's see what's let's see what's breaking then. That's true. It'll be another breaking point, man. I'll tell you how I solve the 300. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> definitely. So again, we'll, we'll do it in two to three year intervals. Nice. Nice. As we do it. But what's next for you guys? And invite people over if they want to check out Sprout. Oh, uh, well, we're growing our ecosystem. Um, for any young people that are into development, we have like amazing APIs and we're having people now building off of Ooh. our platform and selling into our customer base. Nice. It's like SaaS 2.0. I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're really expanding here in the Philippines. So still focus on this market. Mm -hmm. But uh, growing hard, man. You're now doing ecosystem. Play. Yeah, I love it. Ecosystem. So you're not just okay peddling HR. No, you know, it's not just, HR and payroll anymore. We're we're building the the business OS for companies in the Philippines. So like, if you're a company in the Philippines, we have something for you. That <laughs> is amazing. Again, Patrick, thank you very much. But before I let you go, like, comment, on, and subscribe. We're in YouTube. So if you like this. Give us a feedback if you have any questions for any type of founders or who do you want to get those founders. Email us at foundersonly at hustleshare.com. And again, if we did say some jargon, it's going to be the show notes on hustleshare.com. And lastly, if you want to be part of the community, we have a community too of, of Hustleshare listeners. It's going to be on the Hustleshare community on Facebook. And if you want to be part of the creation of this content, sign up for our premium membership at premium.hustleshare.com. Com. Again, Patrick, thank nice. you very much. Nice. Thank you, Ron. Thanks for having me. All right. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace. <laughs> thank you so much for watching Hustle Share on YouTube. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel to get more content like this. And to get the full audio episodes of Hustle Share and Founders Only, subscribe to our podcasts at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.